Okay, hi there, I'm Carl at Escape Trader. Remember at Escape Trader, we build the most personalized and customization direct-to-consumer products in North America. I'm gonna to talk today about power systems. Before I get going, if you find this useful and you may click off during the process, please like and subscribe. We have lots of content that we continue to deliver to everybody. Okay, let's start off here. Remember, at Escape Trader, we have more customization than any other trailer manufacturer in North America, which means you get to choose the solutions that are going to work for you. Today, we're gonna to talk through power systems. It's possibly one of the more complicated systems for people to get their heads around when it comes to RVing. Let's go through it here. I've kind of laid this out. We've got, what are all the inputs? What are all the power sources that can get energy into your trailer? We've got this power storage. Remember, every escape trailer will have batteries, and those batteries give you power storage so you can go boondock, go off grid do whatever you need, or even get some of those great campsites that just don't have services attached to them. That's the power storage. And then we'll quickly talk about the output. You know, what, are the, what does that power actually do inside your trailer and what is powered from what type, or so we speak, what voltage of power. I can also be what type of power because there's direct current and there's alternating current power that we have, uh, we have going through the trailer. Now as well, you know, sometimes it's nice to kind of get a sense of what do these things actually look like. So we've laid out all these equipment on the table. As I go through, we'll point to the different things, but just to get you going, if you didn't know it already, these are batteries. This is what's called a DC to DC charger. These are actually outlets that will be inside your trailer. This is a 12 volt one, right? So you've got that, that circular 12 volt, plus obviously it also comes with a couple of USBs on it. And this is your typical one that you see at home, your 120 volt power. This is what we call a solar controller, and the solar controller goes with the solar panel. This is a plug, and this plug is what goes into your campsite. So you plug it into your campsite, um, sorry, plug it into your trailer in your campsite. Where's the rest of it gone? Okay, this goes into your campsite, and this goes into your trailer. So plug one. This is the removable power cord. It's also an option at escape. Stops any bugs getting into your trailer. I know Harrison loves that one. Okay. Oh, and last one we didn't talk about. We'll talk about this at the end. This is where it gets really complicated, people. This is what's called an inverter. Okay, Harrison, let's get going on this. Input, power inputs. When you're at campsite, you've got a great campsite, you've got full services, you're hooked up with power, everything's wonderful. That's what we call shore power, or I like to call it campsite power. That's gonna give you 120 volts AC. It's the same power you have running through your entire house. You can also get 120 volts AC from a generator, if you have one. And there are some very nice generators, nice quiet generators that you can have in the campsite with you that you can use you know, during the day if they allow it. They will both give you 120 volts. That 120 volts will run straight through into what's called the power converter and distribution panel inside your trailer. This power converter and distribution panel will then give 12 volts DC and 120 volts AC out to all the appliances and fixtures that are in your trailer. Examples of 12 volts in a, in a trailer are lights. Lights are all LED, super low current draw. The 12 volt outlets that we looked at over here, 12 volt outlets, and then the appliances. So, you know, in trailers and RVs, a lot of the appliances run strictly off 12 volts. So for us, it's like your fans run off 12 volts. The fridge can run off 12 volts. We don't recommend it because it'll pull the batteries down real quick, but it can. Uh, the heater runs off 12 volt and every escape trailer comes with a heater. Remember, we're Canadian. It's a bit colder up here. So we make sure every trailer has a heater. Everyone should be able to stay warm. And then like even things like the igniter in your cooktop, the clicking igniter, piezo, will, um, will run off 12 volts. The 120 volts that comes into your trailer goes to the 120 volt outlets, which look like this guy, like what you have at home in your house. It'll also supply AC, 120 volts AC, to your fridge, so you can run your fridge. Cut off, shut off your propane when you're at camp if you're fully serviced, and you can run it off 120 volts AC. And then also your air conditioning. You know, and I really ought to change this to say aircon. Aircon is an option in our trailers, but that will run off 120 volts. That gives you an example. 120 volts comes in, comes straight through, and goes off to these items. Now, but what happens to the batteries? Well, the power converter and distribution panel feeds 12 volts back into the batteries. And we have three different types 
are three different battery arrangements that you can have. The first one is what we call a 12 volt lead acid battery. This is very similar to what would be in your, in your car or your truck. Then an option up from that, and we'll talk about the uh, capacities and stuff later on, is to get two six volt batteries. So basically by being called six volt batteries, it allows them to store more energy. When we put the two together, we can output 12 volts from them. The final one is a lithium battery. Lithium is all the rage these days. Um, they're lighter, no maintenance. They perform exceptionally well and they're very durable. So this is a lithium battery, which also outputs 12 volts for us. So that's the power storage. Now, 120 volts comes in and feeds back in here. Other ways to charge your batteries. Solar, this is an option on the Escape. So you can have solar panels. You can have on all trailers except the 17, you can have a maximum of two 190 watt um, solar, solar panels installed. The solar goes through what's called the solar controller, this guy that we talked about. So it'll come from the solar panel or solar panels, comes together, comes in here, and then this goes and will charge any one of these three different types or three different setups of battery that we have. So it will charge your batteries. And that's all it does. Misconception sometimes is people think, oh, I have solar and that solar is going to run my appliances. It doesn't run your appliances, it charges your batteries. And then the charge from your batteries comes to your appliances. I know it's a little bit of a, I'm not really splitting hairs and I'm not trying to split hairs, but it's, it's just a little difference, subtle difference that people, that people don't quite get. We can also charge your batteries from your vehicle. And your vehicle has what's called a seven pin connector. That seven pin connector provides power from the vehicle back to the trailer. Now, most, I say pretty much all, and I'm not talking about the Teslas and the electric vehicles of the world, but most vehicles, and even some electric vehicles have a, have a 12 volt battery in them, they, um, they're set up for lead acid. So this the vehicle will immediately charge lead acid, batteries, lead acid batteries without any issue. When you have a lithium battery, the alternator on your vehicle ought to be protected because it's not used to seeing uh, lithium batteries. So then we put in what's called a DC to DC charger, this guy, or something like this guy. There's a few of them around. This is the one we use right now. So the DC to DC charger protects the alternator in your vehicle and at the same time gives a little bit of a boost to the charge that can go into the lithium, into lithium batteries. So now we have all these power sources that can go in to the trailer, charge the batteries, and when it's 120 volts, it'll run straight through and give me 12 volt and 120 volt AC into the trailer. If I do not have this 120 volt, so I'm parked at a nice campsite, it's right on the water, it's a bit boondocky, it doesn't have service, it doesn't have power. In that case, I will be running off of my batteries. My batteries only output 12 volts. So they got 12 volts here. Whichever battery system I have, that 12 volts goes into my power converter and distribution. But my power converter only goes from 120 to 12. So 12 volts in means I'm only gonna get 12 volts out. So if I'm running off my batteries, just with this system, I'll get 12 volts out and I can power all of these and I cannot power these. So that's 12 volts. Now, a lot of people then say, well, can I, how do I get 120 volts off of my 12 volt battery? And that's where this guy comes in. So this is an inverter and the job of the inverter is to take 12 volts from the batteries into the inverter and then push 120 volts out of the inverter. So it'll push 120 volts out of the inverter, which goes back up to the power center and distribution panel. And from there, that will then give me both 12 volts DC and 120 volts AC. So they're the, they're the different systems that you will talk about, or we will talk about when we're working with you to configure your trailer. Okay, hopefully that's uh, crystal clear. Oh, one point to make. This guy, the inverter, the inverter is, has a capacity maximum. So it can only power an appliance that is 1500 watts or less. And then most items you use can be like, you can have a one kilowatt kettle, 
sorry, a, um, a kettle for boiling, for boiling water, that'd be a thousand watts, right? So this would still do it. However, things like the air conditioners, they tend to run higher than that. And so in our case, the inverter will not provide enough power to turn on the air conditioner. You still have 120 volts coming through, it just won't be enough to turn on the air conditioner. Okay, Harrison, you like to describe it like a water on a wheel, right? The water on the wheel will turn this and turn this, but there isn't enough water in the wheel to turn the air conditioning on. So kind of a simple way of describing it. Now, a lot of people then question, they say, okay, Carl, that's great that you have all these wonderful batteries and you have great, you have all these wonderful ways of charging the batteries, but how many batteries do I need? I, I don't understand. Okay, so let's give, a, let's give a little bit of an example here. There are so many variables to talk about when we talk about power and power consumption. And it's, it's, it's really challenging. So this is the way I like to, I like to boil up it down to the, the base necessities that you might need. So we had, we had a, a situation this year in Texas where it got extremely cold and they lost a whole lot of power. And we know we had a number of escape, escape owners who actually went and used their trailers for power. So I'm gonna kind of go with the apocalypse version. Three batteries, standard, standard lead acid, pardon me. Option one is to have two six volt lead acid batteries and option two is to have a lithium battery or two lithium batteries. We can do two of those. The furnace will draw what's called, two, so we'll, the furnace will draw 2.4 amps. So let's just say 2.4. Furnace draws 2.4. Lead acid battery will give me, a, it has a stated capacity of 94 amp hours. It's where it gets tricky. You can't use 94 amp hours in a lead acid battery, not safely. Not if you want to use the battery again. They derate them by 50%. So really they say, you know, you don't want to take a lead acid battery below 50% or you'll degrade its capacity and its useful life. In other words, you start to take this down. So you really only have about 47 amp hours usable. 47 amp hours divided by 2.4 amps gives us approximately 19 hours of usage. So in an escape trailer, we know anecdotally, so from our, our customers, that, and I hope I get this right, minus 4F or um, minus 20 centigrade, if you're in the metric system, with that outside temperature, we can maintain, uh, do this, we can maintain I guess it's somewhere around 70 F and um, or 20 centigrade inside the trailer with the furnace that we have in the trailers. So let's pretend apocalypse is hit. It's minus four F outside, minus 20. We're not going outside. We're going to stay inside. Well, we'll be able on a straight up 12, fully charged 12 volt lead acid battery with no other draw in the trailer, we'll be able to do approximately 19 hours before we have to charge that up again. If I run my way through with the two six volt lead acid batteries, we get 110 amp hours usable. We should get about 45 hours of heat in the trailer without having, until we have to recharge again. If I go with a single lithium battery, I'll get about 29 hours. If I double up with the two lithium batteries, I'm gonna get 58 hours plus. Now the reason I say 58 hours plus or 29 hours plus in this case is that we derate the lithium battery by 30%. So, you know, generally we say, hey, don't take it below 30% because it may have some, some adverse effects. However, the lithium battery is far more tolerant to being discharged than a lead acid battery is. So in theory, it can go actually a little bit more without, um, without too much issues. So we can get 58 hours. 58 hours is a good number of hours to, to run off a couple of batteries in the trailer. Now, let's just say we are in Texas and Texas gets a reasonable, amount of, a reasonable amount of sun at the time. Well, if I have my solar, my solar will give me 9.4 amps in full sun. I'll get 9.4 amps per panel. So what's that? 18.8 amps if I have two panels on the trailer in full sun. So you can do the math on that. It doesn't take much, 18.8 amps, to get charge back into my batteries and to give me a whole lot more potential heat in my trailer. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. My name is Carl at Escape Trailer, and we're built for you.